What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com Back with a different kind of tutorial today I wanted to talk about a tool that I found that you can use to create great textures for your SketchUp and other models. So this tool is currently free and I wanted to go ahead and get a video out there. I may do more videos on it in the future depending on how much you like it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this tool is a tool from Quixel, which is the same people that brought you Megascans, which is a super detailed library of both textures and also models. So these are some of the most detailed textures and models available right now, and you can check them out by going to quixel.com, and uh, you can check out the materials by going to the Megascans library right here. So they have a bunch of different materials available, some of which are free. And then um, the tool that we're going to talk about is we're going to check out Mixer. And Mixer is Quixel's tool for taking all of these materials and mixing them together. So you can see how right now if you go to quixel.com slash Mixer, Mixer is actually free for the duration of their beta right now, which is why I wanted to go ahead and create an intro video so that you could download this and play around with it because it's a very powerful tool. So I'd recommend going and at least checking it out. But uh, you can click on the button for get it now, and then uh, you can click the download download mixer button in order to download this tool. And so once you um, once you install it on your computer, I'm just going to walk you through a couple of the examples for right now. I may do more tutorials in the future if you're interested. Um, but like for example, let's look at this uh, first option. So when you first open this up, this is going to give you some sample options. And for this one, I'm just going to open up this jungle ruin floor. So I'll just double click on it and that's going to open this up. And what you're going to find in here is this this has a workspace that allows you to take different textures and actually combine them together to create more detailed textures. So like for example, on this one, this is actually a number of different layers of different things that's being used in here in order to create this look. So like for example, each one of these is in here as a layer kind of like it would be in Photoshop. And so you can see how as I turn each one of these on, you can see how these are being brought in and um, stacked together in order to create a new kind of material. And so there's a lot of different things going on right here. I don't want to get super in depth with this, but I just want to show you how you can come in here and you can actually adjust the way that these different materials are stacked and tiled together in order to create different kinds of looks. So like for example, you can see how if I come in here and adjust the threshold on your uh, tiles material, you're going to get a different look depending on what that setting is. And so you can come in here and you can just mess around with these different settings. And uh, what this is doing is this is messing around around with the uh, masks and other things like that in order to combine these multiple things into one thing. So if I was to turn everything off except the root ground, you can see how this is actually the root ground material from Quixel um, that's being tiled together in here along with the moss and also the tiles that are in here in order to create this material. And so what I would recommend right now is I would recommend just taking this and kind of playing around with it. And like I said, I do want to create a more detailed video about how some of this works a little bit later, but um, I wanted to give you an idea of what's available. And so like this is this is one of the pre-made example files, but let's say that we didn't want to do a pre-made made example file. Let's say we wanted to create our own mix. So what you could do is you could come in here and we're going to go ahead and call this muddy ground but you could go up to new mix and then you're gonna set your resolution and in this case 2048 seems about right and you're gonna set your workflow meaning you need to specify if this is going to be specular or metal and since it's gonna be muddy ground it's gonna be specular and so I just wanted to show you how easy it is to create something new like this and so the way this is going to work is you're going to just start bringing in materials as different layers inside of Quixel Mixer. And so in order to do that, you've got a few different buttons over here. So things like a surface layer, a decal, decal layer, um, different layers like that. There's other things you can do as well. I want to just do something very simple. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to add a surface layer. And so when I click on add surface layer, what this has done is this this has linked to all the Megascans files that I've downloaded. So I've dictated a location and this is linked to those. Um, this can also link to your online library though I don't usually do things like that just because um, because my internet connection isn't very fast but you can see how the online mega scan show up in here as well but for me my local library I want to specifically use this soil mud material 
So the soil mud material is one of the free materials that you can download from Quixel's website under the mega scan section. So you can see how if you go to the free library, you can download this muddy ground material. And so once you download that, you're just going to select it in order to bring that in as your first plane. And so we can go ahead and this is just going to come in as soil mud. And you can see how if you zoom in on this, this is a really detailed texture. Um, and it's already got the maps and everything else kind of loaded into it. But you can take this and you can make different adjustments to it in order to make it look different ways. So like for example, you can see how you can adjust the, the intensity of the height of the bumps using these sliders right here. Um, and then you can also adjust the threshold. Um, you, my recommendation would be to just kind of start playing around with these sliders until you get something that you like. But you can see how this is coming in here and this is actually generating heights based on those frequencies that you have in here. And you can also adjust sizes and repetitions and things like that. I don't want to mess around with those too much right now. What I want to do right now is I specifically want to show you the ability to add a liquid layer. So what a liquid layer is going to do is that's going to add a layer to your material that's going to show up as a liquid. And you can see how when I do this, all of a sudden, instead of a whole bunch of ground, what I have in here is I have a large amount of water on this, which is then reflective. So you can see how it's really easy to make this like a wet, muddy ground look. And you can adjust things like the threshold in order to adjust like how high or how low on your material you want this to be. So you can see how this is really easy to adjust and make changes. And then there's also things you can do down here to adjust things like the moisture. So like for example, if you want the mud in here to look more moist instead of dry. So, you know, like there was like a recent rain or something like that. You can adjust this in here in order to do that. So all of these things are really easy to change, really easy to adjust. Um, so the other thing we could do is let's say, for example, that we wanted this, uh, this mud material to have some more ups and downs in it and that kind of thing. Well, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this and I'm just going to click on add noise layer. So when I add a noise layer, what that's going to do is that's going to add noise to my material. And I'm going to turn my liquid off for a second so you can see what this is doing. You can see how you can use this to affect the ups and downs contained in here. And like you can see how it's just doing this with math. So you can adjust things like the number of uh, number of octaves. You can really do a whole bunch of different stuff in here. In this case, I just want to adjust this so that I get a little, a little more up and down inside this material. And then we can turn our liquid back on. And you can see how by doing this, you can create many different effects. So like with more amplitude there, for example, um, I can create kind of a deeper material with more mud in it. Um, and you can see how this is all really adjustable, but you can use this in order to do that. You can also adjust like the depth of the water. So you can see how if you turn your depth down, um, you can actually see some of the ground inside of this. So it's really easy to take these things and combine them together. But once you're done, and we're going to turn our amplitude down just a little bit. And for now, I think I'm going to do something kind of like this, maybe adjust the threshold uh, the moisture threshold just a little bit more. But once you're done with this, what you can do is you can go in and you can go to file and you can export this to your library. And so you can adjust it or you can export this with the different maps and everything else that you want. You can set this as a you can set this inside a category so you can keep everything organized. Then once you're done, you can just click save. And so when you click save, you can see how in the lower left hand corner, this is exporting your maps. So this is going to take all of these maps and export them so you can bring them into a rendering program. And so now that I've done that, let's just go into SketchUp and bring these materials in and render them using Inkscape just to kind of see how it looks. And so all I want to do is just bring this in real quick to sketch up just so we can get a look at what it does and how it can look with a rendering program like Enscape or something like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a flat plane and I'm just going to click the plus button to create a material. When I create a material, I'm just going to click on this folder right here to go find my texture image. We're just going to find this muddy ground diffuse. So that's going to be the material that we want to apply to this face. And so if I take this, 
and I apply that to this face, you can see how it's being tiled because it's not big enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna adjust this to something like 10 feet or maybe something like 20 feet. So, and there's some tiling going on here. I don't wanna talk too much about that right now. Um, there's some things that you might wanna do um, in order to reduce that. But for right now, let's just go ahead and take it as is. So you can see how that's our, that's our material that's being mapped on here. Well now, if we were to click the play button and render this in Enscape, and if we really zoom in on this, you can see how at the moment it doesn't look very good. And the reason it doesn't look very good is just because um, it doesn't have any of the maps applied to it. Like if I move my if I move my camera view down, you can see how the texture looks great, but everything else looks really flat and kind of unrealistic. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Enscape. And we're just going to go into the Enscape Materials function and we're just going to apply some of those maps. So like for example, for the bump map, I'm going to come in here and click the plus button. And in this case, it's more of a normal map. So we're just going to click on normal map. And so if you look at this, you can see how now all of a sudden, instead of this being a... Uh, Instead of this being kind of a flat surface, as soon as we apply the normal map, this gets a lot more realistic. You can see how you get a lot of other a lot of bumps and other things like that as soon as we apply that normal map. And so you can see how right here, and I'm gonna to try to keep this on my screen so you can see it. You can see how right now what you've got is you've got your bumpy ground and this dark area kinda looks like something, but it's not really reflecting the light or anything like that. Well, in order to do that, we wanna go down in the reflection section and we wanna apply the specular map in this location. So if I double click on the specular map, um, you can see how now, where before, really what this was doing is this was, um, this was rendering this all out really flat. Well, now that we have the specular map in here, we can use this slider. But you can see how now we're getting reflections coming off of the water and off of the kind of muddy areas. So you can adjust this up and down. And I apologize, this will not stay on the top of my screen. But you can adjust this up and down in order to get that reflection. So you can see how this really gives you that kind of like wet, muddy ground effect um, inside of Enscape. And this will work for basically any render engine. You can see how creating this and plugging this in was really easy. So that gives you kind of an idea of what you can start creating using this tool. I love that it's free right now, and I wanted to tell you guys about it so that you guys can go out there and check it out and give it a try. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Did you find it helpful? I just love having that, that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.